About six million American adults have heart failure. Expert Dr. Sakima Smith is here to tell us what that is and why expertise is critical. First, Dr. Smith, what is heart failure? So heart failure is, is simply the heart is no longer able to meet the body's demands. It's not able to pump blood efficiently to the rest of the body to meet the daily needs of the body. So whether it's getting up to go to the restroom, your heart is no, long, no longer able to meet the needs to do something that's what we would perceive as a simple activity. It's a scary term, heart failure. And I think many people think, well, that's it, I'm, I'm done. You know, there are treatments, right? They're correct, and personally, I do not like the term heart failure. The societies are working on trying to come up with more innovative ways to really convey that message because failure has a negative connotation. So I look at it as more, when I see patients in clinic, I try to avoid the term failure. I don't even bring it up. And I'm focused on what can we do to improve your quality of life and improve your heart function. I don't like to use the terminology failure. What are some of the symptoms? So there are a lot of symptoms, some that are subtle, some that are, are not so subtle. So symptoms of heart failure can be something as simple as your shorter breath with your normal activities, going to the grocery store and just not having the energy or the wind. Um, noticing swelling in your legs and feet despite um, trying to um, lose weight with health and exercise and you notice that you're still gaining weight and swelling. Um, being short of breath when you're in bed and when you shouldn't be short of breath. Sometimes it can be chest pain or your thoughts are a little cloudy and you're not able to think straight because you're not pumping enough blood to your brain and you're kind of cloudy and fog in your, in your thought. It can be low blood pressure. Uh, there are some very, uh, those are some of the symptoms that we see and that we try to advise our patients look for um, weight gain, rapid weight gain, um, with despite not really eating a lot of food is really one of the key red flags that we uh, tell our patients to keep an eye out for. Is there treatment? Thankfully we do have treatment, great treatments in fact. We have treatments to help get rid of the extra weight, that uh, water weight that can accumulate. We have treatments, medical treatments that can improve the strength of the heart. Our goal is always to maximize our medical therapy and improve heart function. Now some patients, 10 to 15 percent of patients unfortunately, despite our best efforts over time, the medical, medical therapy by itself is no longer uh, efficient or effective to so whether they can lead a healthy life or uh, a quality of life that's satisfactory to them. So then we look at what we call advanced therapies and that would be heart transplantation or uh, a mechanical heart essentially. Those are our kind of options for end stage uh, heart disease. What causes heart failure? Heart failure is complex. It can be something as, uh, it can be acquired via genetics. It could be environmental exposure or toxins. It could be um, due to uh, coronary heart disease or having a, a heart attack and blockages and causing your heart muscle to be weak. Um, it, can, it can be secondary to um, unfortunately, anti-cancer treatment sometimes, uh, that can lead to it. Uh, so there's a lot of different things that can lead to the heart muscle not being as effective or, or weak, and that, or you know, not to, but, you know, to use the term heart failure, there are a lot of different things that could, that could lead to that outcome. We've mentioned treatments, but can heart failure be reversed? Thankfully it can be. I have a lot of patients in my clinic, and as well as other providers here at um, Ohio State, who have lived really good quality, um, who have had good outcomes and have a good quality of life. Now, it, it means that these individuals typically are adhering to a good diet, they're exercising, they're taking their medications, um, they're coming in as scheduled. Um, so there are, there are opportunities and a lot of patients can do well. Um, but, you know, the reality is it is a, it's a tough diagnosis and not everyone has that outcome and we have to um, always be prepared to look at more advanced options, which thankfully we have the ability to offer those advanced offers here at Ohio State with respect to heart transplantation and mechanical hearts if necessary. If a person has symptoms, the sooner the better, if you can get this under control early? Absolutely. Just like if you're ha having a heart attack, the sooner that you notice you have those symptoms the, and you can seek medical care, the better. Um, heart attack sometimes is subtle, just like heart failure may be subtle. Uh, so I think being mindful of a change in your weight and nuance that sh shortness of breath, um, cloudy thoughts and not able to just have your normal um, mentation, things of that nature can should trigger rapid heart rates, things that just seem out of the ordinary. 
I think it's always better to uh, err on the side of caution if you're not certain to seek medical help. Um, to, because the sooner that we can address some of these issues, the sooner we can, whether it's someone whose heart is getting weak or someone who's having a heart attack, the sooner we can intervene, the data clearly shows the better outcomes you will have. Okay, it's confusing. Heart failure, heart attack, cardiac arrest. You know, people are always confused by all of these. Can you sort of straighten out in few, you know, in just a few sentences some of the differences in those? That's great. So with respect to when your heart stops, uh, that's cardiac arrest. That's an, epi that's an episode where the electrical components of the heart stop working, the mechanical and the way the heart func functions and squeezes stop working, and you need someone um, to administer CPR um, as soon as possible for resuscitation. So that is the situation where the heart actually stops beating and stops working. A heart attack, um, is the heart is still working and beating, but one of your three main arteries that feed blood to the heart so it can receive its nourishment um, is acutely blocked um, by a clot. And that's when someone needs, and that's, and that's typically what we call a heart attack. And someone needs to quickly come in um, for medical care to see an interventional cardiologist or someone of that nature to pop open essentially with a stent and balloon and, and break open that clot to stop that a heart attack. And then heart failure, um, again, is a term where it's a more of a, tends to be more of a chronic situation where for whatever reason, whether it's genetic or it could be the long-term effects of having a heart attack or it could be environmental, it can be um, a lot of different things, but essentially the heart is no longer able to meet the day-to-day -day needs of the body because it's typically working, um, it's not working effectively as a pump to get blood to the body, to your brain so you can think, to your gut so you can eat, to your legs so you can walk. So that's, that's heart failure. The symptoms are vague. They're vague for heart attack. They're vague for, so, I, you know, I always say to people, this is just me, you know your body, but w what do you tell patients? How do they know when they're in trouble? I think the biggest red flag that I try to tell individuals or, and, um, or patients with respect to heart failure, I think is the rapid weight gain. Um, you know, weight can fluctuate here and there, but in a rapid accumulation of weight, five pounds in two days, or um, 10 pounds over a week, and you really haven't changed your diet, is a big red flag. Or all of a sudden you're so short of breath, you're not able to get out of bed. Uh, you're not able to walk to, to go to the grocery store and walk around. Those are red flag signs. Now, they may not necessarily be heart failure, but they do uh, indicate that something is going on that warrants medical attention. And it could be a thyroid issue, it could be um, a rheumatologic issue, but you need to be seen to help decipher that out because it could be the first signs and your first presentation of heart failure. Why should someone come to Ohio State if they're suffering from heart failure? Someone should come here to the Ohio State University and Ross Heart Hospital if they have heart failure because we're the only um, hospital here in Central Ohio that offers heart transplantation, which is the gold standard for end-stage heart failure. If you could list them in a way, what does Ohio State offer that others don't? Either physicians, collaborative care, you know, uh, research, can you just kind of list it? Yeah, here at Ohio State, what we have that others don't with respect to innovation and taking care of patients who have heart disease and heart failures, that we have heart transplantation, which is um, the gold standard for end-stage heart failure. We have innovative research, we have basic scientists translational scientists doing very cutting edge novel um, breakthrough research every day to um, improve the lives of patients. We have innovative uh, clinical trials that are going on where we're enrolling patients on a constant basis, one of the largest clinical trial, clinical trial programs in the country, trying to come up with the next, um, the, the next stage of innovative care that could be quickly applied to patients. Like, just kind of give me an example of what would, what would they be looking at? We have over 30 trials, active trials in heart failure alone that are investigating new therapies, new ways of administering the therapies, different new techniques and procedures to improve the quality of life of patients with heart failure. So it's really uh, remarkable just the breadth and depth of things that are occurring on a daily basis that only Ohio State can offer.